Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I present a single part. It is a nuclear reactor that I made in Blender. This is based on a real nuclear reactor that was made by the Soviet Union uh, starting with 1960s technology. Most nuclear reactors, real ones, are based on 1960s technology. Alas, this is the Topaz 2. And I use reference images posted by Nick Stevens Graphics on Twitter, so thanks to Nick Stevens Graphics for this. And I didn't make it to full detail. In fact, there is some variations between versions of this Topaz 2 nuclear reactor. And so I just sort of averaged them out and omitted certain pipage. Uh, but yeah, it, I made it as spiffy as I thought was necessary. It is a 5 kilonewton nuclear reactor and it was made by the Soviet Union and then purchased by the United States after the Soviet Union collapsed. So in 1991, it was displayed in Albuquerque and uh, there was all sorts of complicated things. It's been tested, uh, I think, for 1,300 hours. The very first one was tested and it's supposed to be able to deliver five kil kilowatts for five years. I hope I didn't say kilonewtons. Kilowatts. Five kilowatts for five years. So it's like a super RTG. It's got built-in radiators. That's what this section down here is. This is the reactor on top. That's the radiation shield. It is one, one ton, basically. And if we put a tank under it, we'll see that it's 1.25 meters in diameter. So uh, I did undersize the stock one. So uh, it's sort of convenient for stock in a way because it's 1.25 meters in diameter, but uh, I, the stock version is undersized. The stock version will just straight up give the five kilowatts as a generator. In realism overhaul, it uses enriched uranium and produces depleted uranium uh, along the way. You can start and stop the reactor. It'll last for five, I, assuming I got the calculations right, the enriched uranium will last for five years. And it's the right amount of enriched uranium, uh, at least from what I read. So that is that is what it is. And I'm going to zip up the part in the video description. But first, let us make sure that it is doing what it's supposed to do, which is produce power. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be really silly, wouldn't it? It doesn't have any other radiation, uh, sorry, uh, thermal requirements, right? A lot of nuclear reactors require radiators, but in this case, it's got the radiators built in. You can see it's smaller than the Delta Avionics package, which might also be a convenient thing. And mainly I'm thinking about using this for electric propulsion like the ion engines and all, uh, in lieu of the reactors in KSP Interstellar. By the way, it didn't seem very expensive. Of course, this was right after the fall of the Soviet Union, so maybe um, they got a deal on it, but in 1991, they got two of the Topaz 2 reactors from Russia for $13 million, apparently. So, that doesn't seem too expensive, but then again, uh, it might have been because... More, more because of the Soviet Union falling than anything else. So, we've got... Uh, ion thruster there. I don't think this was the only reactor used in the Rorsat program, by the way. I think uh, it nor uh, Rorsat's normally used other reactors, not this one. This was just a test reactor. Okay, well, it is... Maybe I should zoom it to space. Doesn't see. I guess it only takes power based on thrust. And it doesn't... well... Specific impulse? It's not consuming much power, is all I'm saying. Okay, now... Now we're using electric charge, but we haven't started the reactor. It's taking 2.4 kilowatts. And then I start the reactor, and now it's recharging. So, that is alright. We don't have any reaction control or anything. This is not how you make a probe, but... Yeah, it could work for something. It's got 5,000 center and 83 meters per second, if you're really, really patient. Stage time, two years. Uh, well, but for a large ship with a lot of energy needs, maybe after you get beyond solar panel range, you might want a reactor like this. But then again, it's got a limited lifespan, so it can't be sent out to Pluto or anything. Unless you wait a long time to start it up, I suppose. Anyway, 
I'll leave you to decide how realistic it is to send it on really, really far-flung missions and how to use it. I'm just going to link it in the video description and hope for the best. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.